Hi, it's Kelly with Kelly Loves Guns, and I am super excited to share with you the footage from the making of my SIG P365 holster from NSR Tactical in Chino Valley, Arizona. They made this holster for me in February of this year, and they actually let me record the whole process from when we were deciding on what design to have to the finished product. So I'm trying to condense the, the footage so that you can really appreciate what they put into their holsters without being too much. So I hope you enjoy the footage. It was three months ago. I didn't have a mic, but don't let that deter you. You should watch this footage because they're awesome. All right, Jared, thanks for watching. At NSR Tactical, who's being very patient with me. Oh yeah, patience is a, a part of the game. <laughs> Showing us all the different, and these are the different ways. Yeah, we got uh, multiple Kydex colors here. We got everything from holstersmith.com. Ding! That's one of my plugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are all the different colors. And she's gonna check them out. And we're gonna make her a holster. Pink is kind of getting my attention. Uh oh. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be. Pink and black's pretty cool. I think we're gonna go pink and carbon fiber. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, look. Wait, wait. Make it more beautiful, right there. Huh? Like? We are gonna go past this guy to get the new holster. Well, that's sort of good. So we're gonna tape to your to your gun to make a holster. Oh, okay. We block out the uh, sight. The sights so that the sights will pass through, and we just use uh, HDPE, just a hard plastic. That's what we use. We like square sight channels because they're cleaner. We want to find the right chamber block because you don't want to have the plastic suck into there because then it'll lock up in your holster. So we want we want a smooth draw. So that one you want to make sure it comes flush to the muzzle, and then we grooved it out so it rides over the top of your sights. So pretty simple this one needs to be cut out just a little bit more so I'm just gonna buzz a little material out of there been around for five years we started out uh, Dave started it out uh, he used to he used to drive a forklift for his parents uh, rock quarry and I think decided one day uh, I want to make holsters and want to make good ones and so he, he's a gun site alumni uh, we're good good friends with James Yeager at Tactical Response. If you guys are familiar with Yeager, you either, you know, love him or you don't. But we love him. So, yep. So that's how Dave started it. And we've, we've taken off since then. We have a lot of gun sight guys come in. We have a lot of Tactical Response uh, alumni. That, that's that's a lot of our, our family is Tactical Response guys. And they, they support us. And we try to make them a good holster. Retention. Uh -huh. Putting a little block there. Uh -huh. So that way it'll allow, allow a rubber spacer and a screw and a nut to sit in there so it'll squeeze around the trigger guard. Okay. That's where you get your retention. Okay. So it's all prepped up. We want it all to one side because it's going to sit flat. So we want everything to sit flat because you're a right-handed shooter. So everything sits flat to one side. It's like very easy, doesn't it? All I did was tape stuff to you, but it makes sense in the long run. Oh my God. Grain is important with these holsters. Like, you know, you know, like wood, wood grain. Uh -huh. The grain runs this way. And so you want the grain to run perpendicular with the muzzle of your gun because there's going to be bends. And if the grain runs with the bends, that's where you'll see cracks start. Oh. So that's something that we pay attention to. We <laughs> keep that protective sheet on there so that it looks really. It looks clean once we uh, once we start working. We're heating up the two pieces of plastic. We got a pink back and a carbon fiber front. We're going to heat her up. We're going to throw it in a vacuum press, and we're going to mold a holster. Nice. So yeah, we let it cook for 60 seconds at 365 to 375 degrees. Uh, heat up this foam pad to get it uh, higher than ambient temperature so it doesn't rob the temperature from the plastic. Uh, hot plastic means good definition. That puppy's ready, about ready to go. It's at a good temperature. Kind of work fast so that your plastic doesn't cool in, in between passing. So pink down first. Grain's going the right way. P365 inside the plastic. Black plastic on top. You smell it? No, it doesn't smell good. Hit the vacuum and then work it. And you just 
worker. That was a good pull, 20. Right now, this is kind of a good part of getting good definition. So you kind of do a little bit of a massage. The vacuum's pulling. It's getting me down to around uh, 20 pounds of mercury. Yeah, about 20. 20 pounds, inches of mercury. And that's a good pull. And see how you get the definition of the gun, the plastic. It's that's a good, it's a good push right there. If you, you would tell right now, if there was bad definition, it would just be really dull. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have any of the trigger guard. You wouldn't have like the indentation of the trigger guard. You can almost, almost pick up the serrations. You can pick up the carbon fiber is coming through. So that all means we did it. Did a good job getting vacuum. That's what these towels were for. These towels come up over the foam and that's why you, you, it draws the suck up and onto the plastic. If you didn't have these little towels, they would just be sucking the foam. So then we put a little cooling towel on it to speed up the cooling process because we can't take it out of there till it's cooled down. Ready? So, still a little warm, so I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit more. What I do is draw my guidelines on there, my hole patterns, and the, the general shape of the holster. And then I'll do more shaping and stuff on the, the sander. It's kind of, it's kind of a, just a basic lines, the guidelines, essentially. So that little half circle is essentially where you'll be able to get purchase on it. All right. Nice. Now we go from here to the drill press stick the gun back in there so having the gun in there doesn't allow it to shift anywhere. We want the plastic to move while we're drilling so I clamped the living daylights out of it. <laughs> the gun helps with that process as well but yeah you, you also want the clamps. So you're drilling around my gun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah I'll be I'll be extra careful. Okay. <laughs> to get the spacing right. take it back to the sander and sand it a little bit more. It's important to do this before you eyelet it together. If you were to eyelet it, crimp it, go over there, sand it, the heat from the eyelet or from the sanding process would expand and it would allow that dust and stuff to get in there and you have these open edges and just don't look good. Right now it looks more like a, a batarang or something Batman would throw at the Joker. but. We gotta bend it, and then we'll put our signature polish on there. We'll wash it, put inch and seven, yeah, inch and three quarter, 1.75 hard loops on there, and uh, it'll go out the door to a happy customer. Eight thirty seconds <laughs> red tea nut. So stick that through the rubber washer that's in there. Kind of hard to focus. There's a rubber washer in there. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. And then I take one of our 5.8 screws, blow all the dust off. We 
Heritage right by you, sir. First thing first, you clean it. So I'm just going to heat it where I want to bend it. 380 degrees, uh, three quarters of the way uh, on the blow. And I'm just going to try to heat it where I want to bend it. The right below that last eyelet there. Keep my back. Tighten it up on the edge, just the edge, just a little bit. Heating it up like that makes it want to wave out a little bit. So try to prevent that. I'm just clamping the edge very slightly, otherwise you start to see it bend out on you a little bit. Now we do them all pre-bent on that jig. So it's a clock 17 with an X300. Eventually that'll be made on the computer and then people won't have to wait eight to ten weeks and they can get their holster in one to three weeks. So, is that what your turnaround is right now? Eight to ten, eight yeah. To ten? On a custom holster, yeah. On all of our quick ship holsters, you're, you're looking at one to five days. Um, we're going to expand it. We plan on it. So we probably did that. And I imagine I was the shooter with the belt loop on. I would want, that's about where I'd want it. I'm gonna do a little bit slight, slighter bend on it on this back side so that way it's not sticking up off the, the belt. But if you don't bend it enough and you try to oop, try to feed the belt through there and the, the belt loops almost flat, you, you might as, I don't know, it's almost like wearing a flat piece of plastic on the side of you. That's why we try to call it that's why we call it contour to the hip. We try to contour to the hip. Everybody's hips are different. But there's, we found kind of an overall, a general medium where it works for most people. I think that's gonna fit your hip pretty good, but we're gonna find out. If not, I'll open it back up and close it. So go ahead. It's right there. I got crazy yeah, hips. It's not, it's not too bad. No. No, it's, yeah, it's just, just a little bit. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Turn it this way. It's a little, little poppy. Very good. Okay, good. Where the gun, the gun's meeting the... Yep, good. And I can tell right now it's not sticking out like... It's not... It's not protruding out as much as it was. You're not going to be able to wear form-fitting clothes if you want to wear a No, I know that. <laughs> I know. Pull it up so I can see it. Very nice. You can still see the pink, which is kind of cool. So we got to touch it up a little bit on the sander, then go to polish. Did you watch all the footage? What did you think? Did you like it? I mean, gosh, I thought it was super impressive what the amount of work and detail that goes into making one holster. So I hope that you enjoy the footage. Sorry about the sound, etc. issues, but three months after using this holster and I love it still just as much today, maybe even a little bit more because now I have a 12 round magazine with my SIG P365 and I've gotten a more adequate belt. That's another whole story. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you at the range. Hey, this is Jared with NSR, and this is Miss Kelly, and she just got herself a new holster for her P365.
Yeah. How about that retention? <laughs>